episode 109. My name is Dave Hunt, and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How's it going, Dave? We have survived another Black Friday weekend. Though this is probably like the chillest Black Friday, uh, given the everything started early this year, earlier and earlier. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot more. Like obviously, like everybody knows, like curbside is a big deal. Um, but I feel like, like overall, like it was a it was a busy week. It was just more of a spread out week than it was a. Um, uh, like a crazy, like Friday morning wasn't even really that bad at all. Um, so it was just kind of more like the stuff was there that, de- and the deals were just like in general, just kind of bland, like not, I guess bland might be too hard of a word, but there was nothing like amazing that I saw or anything like that, that I like no must have guarantee. Like, wow, look at that. Yeah. Well, I think it's because everything started earlier. So we just kind of mm-hmm. like, uh, there's no surprise. Yeah. Cause it was just mostly like, yeah, these sales, this Friday are the same sales we had last week when we started our sale for yeah. Black Friday. So there's like nothing surprising. There's no price errors this week. This, you know, like there is sometimes, and I think companies have just gotten way better at either A, fixing it or B, not letting it happen. Yeah, there was the usual like, uh, like Walmart just being like, you know what, screw our advertised sales. We're going to put some stuff up for like half off of what we said. But it wasn't mm-hmm. an error. It was just Walmart doing their yeah. usual like last second Black Friday weekend craziness that immediately made me regret all my purchases i made from gamestop like a couple days before because uh, i still have like my stack of like purchases uh i don't know camera uh that i made but like walmart going like 15 dollars on like so many games frustrated me because yeah. i'm too lazy to go through the process of returning stuff to gamestop well it's, it's like that like it it becomes like what's your time worth like seven dollars like really mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah but but like know, the strange going like, down to like fifteen dollars like twice was like oh no yeah. i even messaged you about that you're like no <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, not for me you know because i was like huh <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it was it was even the for a little while there it was like the their their ultimate edition one right that came with the new or the remakes in like no in february so, yeah or i think that one was a mistake because that one sold out within seconds and then they brought yeah. uh the other you know the, the standard <laughs> edition out and then it yeah. stuck around for like sporadically throughout the weekend where it'll just like keep coming yep. back and i would just each time just be like man am i really gonna go through this process of like returning to gamestop no yeah, i'm so. not <laughs> All right, so we are Digital Days Gaming. We're a weekly podcast that posts every Thursday morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Time on podcast services of your choosing. If there is a service that we're not on that you use, let us know, and we will see if we can get on there. Um, if your service allows you to leave a review, uh, please do so. If it allows you to leave a review with words, that helps a lot more, too, uh, as well as just sharing the show, retweeting, sharing on Facebook, telling somebody that you're listening to it, making a suggestion to somebody. Uh, maybe somebody you're seeing over the holiday weekend um, or weeks to come, however you however you're celebrating, um, whatever works. Just sharing, you know, telling a friend is always always helpful. Um, and then uh, we do live stream on Twitch every Tuesday evening, anywhere between five thirty and seven Eastern time, depending on our schedules. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Digital Days Gaming, where we are a Twitch affiliate. You can sub to us if you want. You can use your Amazon Prime subscription perk, or you can just directly sub to us, um, as well as we have PayPal accounts and Teespring's accounts. I know I said that we were going to do a Teespring sale. Um, I kind of forgot. Yeah, yeah. But then I also saw something from Teespring's directly that they're going to be doing a promotion that we that I'll push, and then... I was talking to our producer, my wife, and uh, we should probably just run a sale for like December. Yeah. Like, you know, so we'll do something with that. We'll get on it. We'll get on the ball with that. Uh, So you can check that stuff out. I think she wants to add a couple other things in there, too, like maybe like coasters or mugs. I don't know. She'll mess around with it. So um, but other than that, uh, we've got a little bit of a lighter show because of the holiday break that most uh, companies took in uh, the U.S., so we're going to jump over to a little bit of news. Yeah, so uh, most of our news, probably for the next couple of weeks until the Game Awards, which, God, when is the Game Awards? I should know this. It's like a national holiday for video <laughs> gamers. Uh, I, the 8th? The 9th. 8th or 9th? Okay, so next yeah. week. So there's not going to be much news until the 9th. So we're getting most of our stuff from all the financial reports that are happening uh, are we gonna have to record a show after the game awards <laughs> hopefully that's always the dream yeah. is like it's good yeah. enough because i think we did one year i think yeah. or we de- like delayed our recording enough yeah uh for that but that's the dream so r- most of the stuff we're getting now is going to be uh just stuff that they have said in financial reports which is sometimes interesting sometimes it's 
just like weird windows where you wonder if companies can get away with lying to their investors in terms of like, hey, this game's going to release here. And then that's like a total lie, but whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So CD Projekt Red was out there and they gave a little bit more detail on uh, Cyberpunk 2077's next gen version as well as The Witcher 3. So uh, they're still kind of keeping things vague, but uh, previously when we talked about Cyberpunk, they just put like everything on a roadmap and they just put the year 2022 on it with like no specific <laughs> like uh window so they are going to release cyberpunk 2077 in q1 of next year um and they said there is going to be a big patch uh going to all versions of the game and that will happen the the day the next gen or current gen whatever you want to call them uh versions of the game come out and then they are saying the first expansion will then follow that to probably second half of next year. And then um, my favorite part, uh, CD Projekt Red, I guess, were asked like if they would put Cyberpunk 2077 on services like Game Pass. Because, of course, an investor would ask that because it's like free money as far as an investor is concerned. Mm-hmm. and C- Instant money. Mm-hmm. Instant money, instant gratification. You don't have to worry about anything. And CD Projekt Red said it's too soon to put a game like Cyberpunk 2077 on Game Pass or services like that. Uh, And I think that was pretty interesting because it shows that there's like a level of confidence that once the next gen versions come out, that they feel like it's going to sell enough that they don't need the instant gratification of putting it on a service. Uh, I have to ask you, Dave, do you think that's... But it's not too soon to make your game $10? <laughs> I don't think they had a choice in that <laughs> aspect. Because, like, if I buy it on Xbox, don't I just automatically get the next-gen version? Yes, because it is a free upgrade. I know, that's why I put this right. in here, just specifically like, for that aspect like, of the story. I am almost, like, tempted to just to buy Cyberpunk for $10 just to see if eventually it turns into anything. I have a like, disc copy, and I'm tempted to yeah. just buy the digital one because it went on sale right. uh, low enough. Yeah, and, like, I mean, Angela... Angela is like no um you know like she's she's pretty much like no that game has too much of this in it and too much of that in it and she's pretty much like you can't even like like i don't even want owen to hear that game yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're not buying it we don't need it in this house is what she tells me <laughs> so, um but I, I i i completely disagree i think that putting it on on playstation now putting it on game pass um even something as small as like that small as giving it you know putting it on plus for a month like it's you get people to download it or play it and then if it is solid then they buy the expansions like right now like are you buying an expansion for this game no I, like as soon as i saw <laughs> that they were talking about the expansion because of course they talked about it before the game came out but it was a, a thing where I was like, wait, did they promise free DLC? Are they expecting people to pay DLC? I had to look that up, and I really couldn't figure out mm-hmm. the answer. I believe they expected yeah. people to pay for the expansions. It would be free updates, but right. then paid expansions. I I wouldn't want any of anything from this game <laughs> as someone who played it and then quit after like four or five hours. Because I, I, I think the game is average even if they fix all the bullshit around it. Like, I don't think there's mm-hmm. anything special about this game. So, I don't know. I do see it as like this them being super confident that like this next gen thing is going to just fix so many of their issues and it probably will just that's, that's possible. Um, or trying to drive that like, price up, but being like, no, nah, no, nah, yeah, like, no, I mean, I, I think it's possible, but at the same time, like, I don't think it's enough to save face. Like I know there's people that have waited to that, that are like, you know what? I don't, I don't care. I've got enough stuff in my backlog. I'm going to wait until the next gen version of the game comes out, which is totally fine. Or the current, I guess now it's the current gen. Like we've been talking about this game for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like, I feel like you could just do a lot to just, especially if you have plans for longer term expansions, like to just to get instant player base, to put it on a service, whether it's, like I said, whether it's now, whether it's game pass or whether it is PS plus for a month. Um, you know, like it's just one of those things where, like, at, at this point in time, like, what's it going to hurt? You're selling it for ten dollars, whether that was your choice or not your choice. Your game is being sold for ten dollars. Your game has been out for over a year. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, especially right now, like with it going on sale at most places, this seem like they're just trying to get rid of their physical copies, and there being a free upgrade. I still have weird feeling that like releasing this game at sixty or seventy dollars on PS Five and Series X 
it's not going to go over well. Like, I don't see a lot of people rushing out to buy that game at full price. So I, I right. think they have to just add this to a service just to get people interested. In yeah, but if you, have, if, you own an, if you own an Xbox and you have any desire to play this game whatsoever, just spend the $10 now. Yeah, especially if it's a free upgrade. Unless they go back on that. Right. <laughs> but I doubt they could because they could not deal with the bad PR uh if they yeah, were back on that yeah. i mean we already know like sony's position on that of like different versions and different SKUs. Yeah. but usually there's additional content in there but anyway yeah uh and then the last bit of news from this is the witcher 3 will have its next gen uh launch between april and june 2022 so they're gonna be pushing out a lot of stuff that like uh witcher 3 and cyberpunk kind of completely different games but they are very specific to an audience so you'd wonder if mm-hmm. one of these are going to get pushed out because you'll kind of cannibalize uh yeah there. i think they're trying to cap like doesn't season two of witcher on netflix like launch in december yeah it launches like, in a couple yeah. weeks so uh, yeah so i think that they're just trying to ride that a little bit i'm sure there'll be aver- like i guess netflix doesn't really have advertisements but there'll be something in there for that i would assume um and then the thing else that you put in here too that i saw some people talking about on social media mm-hmm. that i'm just like okay like you don't really understand how the game industry works of course they're working on their next game already mm-hmm. yeah people were really excited about <laughs> that but it's you have to it's a long way away you have to tell investors that because investors are like okay you guys are still trying to put up the fire that is yeah. cyberpunk what else are you working on of course they have something else uh but do you think it's time for them to cut like like the, they should just stop looking at expansions and just focus on their next game and just like consider cyberpunk doa it depends because their next game was supposed to be a cyberpunk game because they were gonna oh, they were gonna okay. do a spin-off multiplayer game for cyberpunk so it's like they kind of are bought in now to where depending on how much work they put into that spinoff, they might have to see that through. And the only way to make that successful is to make Cyberpunk 2077 exp- like like work and be something that people are still interested in. They- Cyberpunk 2078, now it works. No, basically, yeah. You know, Now you can play with four people. Uh, they, they have to do that uh, because they might be too far along. Though they are a company, and we hear about that all the time. Um, I mean, take two apparently canned a game not too long ago like a couple of weeks ago that already had 50 yeah. million dollars invested in it yeah so we can totally see uh, or i could totally see cyberpunk or cd project red being like let's just kill everything related to this who cares how much money we already spent it's not worth it in the long run yeah for sure or if it looks like a quick reskin you know they just like rename it something else <laughs> uh completely <laughs> all right um so uh, Daybreak Games, uh, the creators of DC Universe Online, uh, they had a presentation where they basically confirmed that they are working on a Marvel MMORPG. Not a lot going on with this story, other than it reminded me that DC Universe Online is actually a still-running MMO, uh, which I completely forgot about. There was nothing wrong with it when I played it back on the PS3. Uh, and I think it did make it over to PS4, and it's still running on PlayStation now. Uh, I forgot that existed, uh, but apparently... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I've messed a little bit with DC Universe Online. The, the asymmetrical top-down look just doesn't do it for me. Oh, no, no. DC Universe um, Online, it was, like, actual third-person, kind of. Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't... Okay, maybe I, play, maybe I played something else then. Uh, so. Yeah, but no... Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure it was third person. I put like 20 hours into that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Probably am. But I thought it was like kind of that asymmetrical top down look of, you know, multiple people on the screen, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it was an actual third person one. Uh, right. Yeah. Then I, oh, no. This is the, you had to pay like $80 for the game and like $15 a month. Mm, yeah. I think uh, uh, eventually it went free to play, but yeah, when it first came out, it was right. kind of pricey to get into and consist continue. Yeah. I was, I wasn't about that then. Yeah. It, <laughs> like, it went to free to play by the time it hit PS4. Yeah. Uh, uh, at least up to like level 60 or something like that. Uh, it was, it was fine. It was a little like bare bones, but it was an old school kind of MMO feel to it, which is why it was kind of bare bones. Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Daybreak games have been making MMOs like their entire run uh though right now like i guess it makes sense from a perspective of like wow is down uh final fantasy Mm -hmm. 14's putting out like it's it's not its last expansion but it is like kind of near its last expansion or at least one for a long time 
So there is room for another MMO to go into it and might as well try it with Marvel. Ugh. <laughs> no, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. I, I've just mar- I think I'm just Marvel fatigued at this point. I am too, and we like haven't even seen all yeah. the Marvel games yet. Yeah, like that, that's like, and it, it's it's a combination of the movies and the games and just the, like the yeah. No, no, I, I totally get you on that. And the shows, like it's you know, like it's fine. Like I'm still, I'm still watching stuff, but you know, just like I like I think I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Like I was even talking about it with my son this week because uh, he was home for the, for the weekend and um it. it we were talking about Eternals, and I'm like, I-, I love the concept of what they're doing. I don't love the fact or the thought in my mind that this might take five or six years to come to fruition. Yeah, no, I I was just having this conversation too with uh, with a couple people of just like, I I love the Marvel stuff, but I'm at the point where they've hit the bottom of the barrel with like characters that I genuinely care for, and yeah. well, even like the Insomniac Wolverine thing, like okay, like that's gonna be cool, that's gonna be great. Why does it have to be potentially connected to the Spider-Man game? Well, no, I, like, can't it just live on its own island? Well, I don't mind that, but I'm like, you know, we were talking about like Amy Hennig's working on a, a Marvel game. We have this coming out. Uh, Midnight Suns, I was interested in until I saw gameplay. Uh, now yeah. he might have a Marvel MMO. Um, seeing Spider-Man in Avengers did nothing for me, especially when they were mm-hmm. like, yeah, there's not actual story thing. We have some cutscenes, yeah. but they're like comic thing to where I'm just like, I'm loving Guardians, uh, but I think I'm loving Guardians for the reason, like, a lot of, like, non-MCU fans, like, the Guardians movie is it feels completely disconnected (laughs) from everything else going on. Um, So... Well, and there's always something, we'll talk about it more, too, but there's always something to be said for a great third-person action game. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, you know, like, we can talk about too much fatigue on those as well, but, like, Spider-Man and Wolverine, as I'm expecting to be a third-person action game, and Guardians and, you know, Uncharted and all those games that, you know, infamous. You can go down and down and down and down the list um, of, you know, good narrative story play, like, you know, and, and solid gameplay. Like, it works, no matter what basis of it is. And Guardians is enough of a split-off. Guardians of the Galaxy is enough, enough of a split-off that I'm not worried about Ant-Man showing up and, like, teasing a game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So. I'm curious about this specifically because like Daybreak has they they have the pedigree that they've been making MMOs like for the entirety of their the, their career, uh, but I just want to know what like launching an MMO. I guess we saw it with Amazon's MMO, uh, Homeworld, uh, New New World, New World, but it's but that's already getting just pounded on right now yeah because like, they did it, the thing. It, it had a great two or three weeks and they're like oh we got stuff and things planned and they don't have anything no no, no. and specifically <laughs> with that it was the problem that we see with all the things that came post destiny where everyone is like how do we do a games as a service looter shooter and then every mm-hmm. game made the same mistakes where it's just like why are you missing features from the thing you're copying and yeah. homeworld had the, basically was going through the same issues that like Final Fantasy 14 fixed like a couple years ago uh, Mm -hmm. to where it's just like, oh, you can't transfer your world. Oh, you can't do this with currency. And it's like all the other MMOs do that. So I want to know what they are going to do. And apparently like these wars that or battles that you have are like humongous time commitments and they can just be started like on command and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, there's, there's so many like little things that like Amazon's MMO has like caused where it's or they're 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 running into the same issues that other mmos have ran into a couple years ago and it's just like how do you make that mistake so i want to know and then i yeah i still have the same concern i'm sorry i didn't cut you off i still have the same concern about what marvel does or does not allow you to do or what the heroes are allowed to or not allowed to do an mmo is you know part of the reason you know from a far distance part of the reason final fantasy does really well and wow does really well is they don't really have any canon or foundation they have to look at if they want to make a new class or a new character they can kind of just do it Mm -hmm. and they don't you know and it's like okay like iron man can't all of a sudden just you know shoot stuff out of him or captain america can't start shooting stuff out of his hands because they want him to do something different or they want him to be a mage Mm -hmm. or to be a tank you know like there's there and and again like Part of an MMO usually involves loot or or, or abilities and and spells and, it and, came to and all this stuff. You know, it has yeah, to like it, y- we've already seen the problems that the Avengers game has in terms of trying to be a looter grinder game. That there's nothing to really loot or grind. 
and and you know it's just it's just concerning to me and i think that's part of the reason that dc did well but didn't have long-term dc universe online did well but didn't have long-term staying power or long-term grabbing power because there's only so many things you can do with batman well yeah and especially like dc universe like you you always created your own hero like you created your own hero gave it your own powers and then you picked like a hero to mentor but right. then there's only so many villains you can go against. And then your basic yeah. interactions where it's just like, Oh, you need to help Superman do a thing. And it was just like, I don't know. This felt empty. And just like, why does Superman need my help? And then why are there 15 of us trying to fight the penguin right now? He's just a dude. Yeah. A dude. Uh, but AI, like to your point, like, they can't just, you know, final fantasy be like, Oh, you're going to fight a dragon that has a bull's butt today. Yeah. yeah. You know, like they can just do it, you know, because they, they, they want to, I'm sure there's some deep lore thing that I don't know about in yeah. general, but they can, um, they can write it in there better than, you know, all of a sudden Batman and Superman are fighting a supernatural being that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, like they, they might be able to make some hero uh, villains, but the, for the most part, it's going to be like, Oh, Riddler made this thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to see this happen just because I want to see what an MMO looks like. And I, yeah. I feel like if a, a Marvel MMO just like flatlines, people are going to be like, okay, maybe Marvel needs to chill with how much <laughs> they're spreading stuff out. Especially like Avengers should have been a slam dunk with Square Enix, like fumbled right. the ball management wise. Yep. And that has to hurt Marvel. Yeah. I, I The positive thing about this story is that, we know that Daybreak can make a average to above average MMO. We know that they can do yeah. that. And they're making an MMO or allegedly making yeah. an MMO. We've always talked about going back to like Anthem and BioWare and Square Enix. Like, are these companies capable of doing a games as a service? So far, the answer has been no, because they've been trying to do something that they haven't been able to do before. Or we hear that maybe they weren't the right choice for the studios, you know, versus trying to find another studio that that has shown this to it. But we know that they can make a good, a, a decent MMO. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious because a part of this story was they f tried to and failed to make a Marvel MMO a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. maybe they already solved the issues that we're worried about because their first one was <laughs> like canceled and failed. Um, but I would imagine the reason they're even bringing this idea back is because around because uh, I believe they said like their their failed attempt was in like 20. 16 2018 range that would have been in a spot where most mmos were just flat out dying and then final fantasy 14 had its crazy re-emergence the, over the last two years which probably got yeah. them like oh shit mmos actually can still exist you just have to do them well so maybe they've already learned these lessons with the first time they try to make this game and if yeah, and I, I just hope they're heavily paying attention to the the good things that New World did, and then the bad things that New World did. Yeah. Like, really, really look at that. Which is basically, don't make the mistakes Final Fantasy XIV made four years ago. Because that's literally <laughs> most of the issues that Homeworld had, is just people just yeah. compared it with the successful one. Which is what happened during WoW's day, uh, WoW's yep. Prime, where people would just be like, just look at WoW, copy WoW, and you'll be mm -hmm. fine. And then so many MMOs didn't copy WoW. I think WoW. they're the smartest people in the room. Yeah. And it didn't do anything with it um okay uh the last story uh is definitely something i would be into uh but uh playstation home is up and running again uh so a non-profit group destination home the reason they're non-profit is because they can't take any money for doing <laughs> what they're doing without getting sued by sony uh but they have resurrected playstation home which has been shut down for six years uh and yeah, so they have some hubs. They have, like, the hub world. They have, like, different areas that they were able to bring back. Right now, it requires custom firmware uh, to bring up, which isn't too hard to do on a PS3 because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's the old platform. Sony's really not trying too hard to maintain uh, the firmware with that. Uh, but basically, it's kind of cool because um, they've basically been asking people to send them their save data from PlayStation Home so then they can get the... Uh, data for those areas so then they can resurrect them because there was a bunch of different areas in the game or whatever you wanted to call it social hub uh that uh they they need to bring back one by one but they need the data from people so they can reverse engineer how to bring this up uh so it looks like they've been able to do it with uh modded ps3s and then also with emulators on pc because ps3 emulation has actually kind of gotten pretty decent right now it's still not great but 
given that it's only been like 15 years and the PS3 has like the monster architecture that it has, uh, it's not too bad to uh, run an, a PS3 emulator uh, given those. Um, this comes at the same time that a uh, nonprofit called PS1 has brought back MotorStorm, uh, and now they have brought back uh, online play for Warhawk, so- SOCOM Confrontation, Killzone 2, Twisted Metal Black, Calling All Cars, and now MotorStorm. And they are working on a Ratchet and Clink game from the PS3 and Resistance and Wipeout. So they are bringing back a ton of PS3 games or at least the online servers for the PS3 games. And it's actually, for the PS3 games that aren't PlayStation Home, you just need a PS3. You don't need any custom firmware on there. You just need a PS3 that can connect to the internet, and basically you point the DNS uh, servers to a di- to their servers, and then it resurrects the online. So it's actually a really cool process. I tried this out with Warhawk last year, and it works. Uh, but any thoughts, Dave? On this, other than the fact that it's kind of cool that players are bringing back the online. yeah, that's the only interesting part about it is is that that that, that your community is bringing it up. Other than that, I I, I just don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I, for me, this is really cool though, just to have some of these back online, uh, even if it's just to mess the, around with. Yeah, I, the only positive that can come from this is this: if this begins to be gain any traction, like Sony obviously knows who to hire if they're going to do some kind of backwards compatibility thing or try to resurrect some PS3, or if we're gonna you know, remaster Warhawk or something, which I think if any of the if any of the games that you mentioned were going to get a remaster or a remake, we would have heard of it about it, heard about it. Yeah, now. yeah, which is like why Sony hasn't shut this down <laughs> for the most part. I think because they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. But I guarantee if they had a Warhawk remastered going, they would give a shit that someone's trying yeah, to bring yeah, Warhawk for sure. back. I also like it, so. If you need a PS3 that can go that they, they can go online to point the DNS server to, you have to have an active Plus subscription. Um, no, PS3 had free or, online. No, online was free. Yeah, yep, so you're, so right. you're okay. good. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. I was like, oh, they're getting fifty bucks out of people. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. Uh, but that's how they would probably try and stop people if they're like, you know what, we're gonna add Plus to PS3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. It, but it, it surprisingly works really well. Uh, they're basically just mm-hmm. reverse engineering stuff. Uh. I was on their Discord just because they, like, broke down on their Discord, like, what games are actively working on. And the reason some games work and some games don't is because Sony had a very specific structure uh, or architecture Mm -hmm. that they use for all their games. So that's why you're not seeing, like, some third-party games get resurrected. It's because people have learned how to reverse engineer Sony online games. Yeah. So... That's fascinating. Uh, and then there's this like weird... And we know how stable that network is on PS3. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they're able to reverse <laughs> engineer all this stuff. Uh, but it, it's just interesting just to see, you know, I, I saw a list going around of just like, okay, uh, we can resurrect everything but like Gran Turismo and Fat Princess because they use completely different architecture for, for those games. Uh, so people are just kind of... Or these people... Which Gran, for Gran Turismo is a little surprising. For Fat Princess, I feel like that they are a third-party studio. No, it was uh, Santa Monica uh, that was doing that. Uh, oh, yeah, that was when Santa okay. Monica was making a bunch of like smaller games or helping with a lot right, of smaller right, games. Right. They didn't make. Did they make Fat Princess Adventures? No, I think a third party made Fat Princess Adventures. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. But the original Fat Princess. That's probably where I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. either right. Santa Monica or San Diego. Uh, okay. Made that. Um, but yeah, uh, like SOCOM Confrontation is up online. Killzone Two actually had me kind of tempted uh, for that, but be- <laughs> the only problem is because it's a very specific way. The only way to get like a good non bot game is to go on their server and then just like get the thousands Makes, of people. See who's playing. Yeah. Yeah. And then like try um, to make a day. They calling all cars do you was really, back, which is kind of cool. Let's say, do you really think that you would at this point in time, like on a Friday night, would enjoy a Kill Zone 2 multiplayer match? As someone who. 10 years later. Thousands of hours into it, I would probably do it one weekend. Uh, and okay. then that would be it. Uh, okay. The Warhawk one. Is definitely one that I think it's more popular. You can probably get a game that in game is, infrequently. Game is so clunky. <laughs> it was the voice chat was terrible, but it's still <laughs> it's still interesting. Uh, the one that's kind of fascinating is like Twisted Metal Black. Uh, mm-hmm. They were able to resurrect the PS2 servers um, for that's that. That's interesting. The code is just fascinating. Mm-hmm. That's the most interesting part of the, about this is what can be and can't be or what you thought could be but can't be, you know, stuff like that. That's the most fascinating part about this. But yeah. I it, I don't know. 
I, I, I like even going back to you know completing Skyward Sword. I'm like, okay, like I had a good time playing that HD game of that, but that that game's ten years old. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, the only cool thing is like what, what I like about this is because it like I know trophies don't matter, but like you can technically probably get some old trophies that you, you've always like. <laughs> I'm interested in him getting Resident Resistance 2 back online because that 10,000 kill trophy was like impossible to get back then. Uh, but just the fact that these games aren't fully dead uh, is like yeah. a cool aspect. Even if like no one's actually going to use this stuff, but the fact that people are like so dedicated to getting MotorStorm back online. Uh, and then I think there was like two versions of MotorStorm where it was like MotorStorm and MotorStorm Complete Edition were technically mm-hmm. two different games but they were able to get them to to work properly uh mm, that's interesting yeah um I, I just hope we see more of this though i don't know how time consuming it is and they're not asking for money so this is literally yeah. just a hobby thing that these a people passion are doing. project yeah yeah because yeah. uh, i would totally donate money to them but they're very clear of like do not send us money because uh, if we take any money uh sony can then come after us so they, yeah. they have to just do this for fun uh and just seeing like people make wish lists of stuff they want them to work on uh and then them being like yeah we're actually working on it already uh, then sharing progress videos i don't know i thought mm-hmm. it was cool uh playstation home coming back is kind of whatever that's like a weird museum piece to, to bring back up uh but the fact that like some games are getting their functionality back is pretty cool yeah until they kill psn in like two years <laughs> all right so, so you didn't add this to the doc but i wanted to ask you this because I, I, I saw it last night and my wife's like you should add that and i forgot what are your thoughts on and i, I don't have the headline in front of me so i might not be 100 percent right here but what are your thoughts on what it sounds like being the xbox series s being the best-selling piece of tech for black friday i mean that is a thing that we've kind of assumed would happen because it is the cheapest tech you can get in terms of like Mm -hmm. the cheapest next gen console this is exactly what we imagined microsoft wanted you go into a store and you're like i need a next gen system for somebody and they're like oh well this one's three hundred dollars right yep Mm -hmm. 2.99.99 and stores must love that because they are significantly smaller so they can pack more of them on a truck especially right now Mm -hmm. with all the shipping stuff that's going on and I, th- I think the chipset's got to be less. I mean, like, the mm-hmm. doesn't have to be as, you know, we've heard about the chip shortages affecting the Series X and the PS5. You rarely hear about the and X. I don't, I, right. Yeah. Um, so I just found it to be, like, super fascinating. Not the best, it, like, it, it was the best-selling console on Black Friday, but I, I feel like the Bloomberg report or the Adobe report said it was the best-selling piece of tech. Yeah, I believe that's what the original report said. Um, so yeah. that doesn't again it doesn't surprise me it's at a really good price point and if you think about like new tech that's out right now there's not much you know like yeah. ipads oh no, yeah the for sure it's a week it's a week it's it's yeah it's a, it's a weak market but also as much as people hate to hear me say this buying the s essentially means you're buying game pass oh like, for sure but, the, <laughs> but the, 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 the funny thing is and i know it's on sale yeah the funny thing is the amount of people buying an s for their family members probably have no idea about game pass they just bought it because it is the the cheapest system that they can get and then they can still have a next gen system Uh, that like Mm -hmm. as far as i know like i don't have an s you do you haven't run into any real issues to where you're like ah shit i should have got an x outside of not having a disc like that's like your yeah only regret. essentially that's the, that that's the only thing right now like and and the only when I look at space like I was like so I was downloading I bought Guardians of the Galaxy on Xbox because mm-hmm. I found it digital on sale for twenty five bucks so I just bought it on an Xbox, um and you know I had Forza on there I had Microsoft Flight Simulator on there I had um some other, like it, uh, aside from the space thing like I have a hard time in my head buying an expansion card for two hundred dollars mm-hmm. when I'm like I could just get a damn X mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you yeah. know. Um, but I can't get one right now. Um, but in, like, I'm not disappointed with anything or, you know, the playing destiny on PS five and playing destiny on the S I haven't noticed a dramatic difference. Um, and then all the reports we've been seeing like Forza and I haven't seen anything positive or negative about halo on the previous systems. Um, you know, so like, it's just, it's just this, like I was rearranging some stuff the other day behind, like in my entertainment center. And I was like, you know what? The Xbox can go completely behind the TV. Um, because I don't need to touch it. Yeah, you don't you know don't need to mess with it at all. Yeah, because it's yeah yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so it's it was just super interesting to me. Like I'll be really curious to see what like the MPD numbers are for November. Um, 
because as much as we, you know, I was trying to get an X or trying to get some people PS5s and you go to Amazon and the S is always there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's just, you know, like the X is not available. The Halo X is not available, uh, but the S is just there. And it's kind of going to be like that little engine that could over. It's like, it's just, it's there. It and people are going to get to the point where they got to put something, you know, under the tree or for Hanukkah or whatever. And it's the perfect, oh shit, it was all I can get a holiday yep. gift this year. Like, and you're not really shorting the person. No, no. Like, outside of like, discs, like we've been yeah, talking about, like, like, yeah, without a disc drive, like you're not really shorting the person. And if you give them a three month subscription, a game pass for whatever it is, like 25 bucks or something like that right now, like it's just, it's, it's just an interesting time. And you know, like of where, like I could just see like the Phil Spencer kind of like sitting in his chair going, uh huh. Yeah. Told you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, because it, we, I feel like we always see this, you know, this is basically the thing where like people are like, oh, no one wants a console because like PCs are so high powered. But it's like, no, people just want like the simplest means to play their games. And the Series S has done that now for the next gen consoles where it's just like, yeah. it's just the. It's similar to what the Switch did. Mm -hmm. Oh, my kid can play his Nintendo game and not be on my TV all the time? Yeah. Sign me but up. But people are like, oh, like <laughs> the Switch is super underpowered. It's like, yeah, but it, it does the thing it needs to do for its. Yeah. First party games, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so. No, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it really quick. Yeah, so. I mean, I, that's not surprising at all, uh, especially the PS5. I, even though I feel like the PS5 has been kind of easily available this week uh, in terms of like, uh, it's just been <laughs> hid behind Walmart Plus and Amazon Prime. Yeah. and uh, We've had Best a hard Buy. time getting an X and she's she's been diligently trying to get me an X and we've been having a hard time. So I can't even imagine what the five would be like. Yeah, but. Uh, but they have been available. Like this morning, the X has been available like at four different locations online. Uh, this morning, I follow someone who just tweets specifically PS5 and Xbox stuff, even though I'm not really actively looking right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's been available a lot uh, the last like two days or throughout the last week. Uh, yeah. But that's it for news. There's not really much going on. So, yeah. So, uh, so what we're playing and watching. So, um, I'll go first. Um, just real quick, like so. Thanksgiving morning, uh, my son and I decided to go to the Lions game. <laughs> I can still buy tickets. Um, that was my first time going to Ford Field for a Lions game in the 18 years it's been open. Um, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, it was cool. They lost, but whatever. Um, and then uh, Angela and I have been watching Hawkeye. Mm. Uh, we watched the first two episodes. It's a little bit of a slower start. Uh, to the point where my wife's kind of like she's uh, her and I both are kind of on the fence about it. But at the same time, I was like, we were kind of like this with WandaVision. So, um, you know, it's just it's so it'll be, you know, super interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Um, you know, messed around with some Destiny stuff as I've been helping a new community and not a new community member, but a, a guy that was playing Destiny before. He's been playing on a more regular basis now trying to get him kind of under, up to speed and understanding some stuff. Um, like I said, I picked up Guardians of the Galaxy. I got about an hour in the other night. But I've been going to work like super early, like 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. So when I get home, I'm super tired <laughs> so, um, the last couple of days. And then Owen through Gamefly, Owen and I have been playing on the Switch uh, Yoshi Craft World. So uh, for Guardians, I'm a little bit too early in. I'm having a little bit of a hard time with the mechanic of... You know, having the other characters do something, I, but I've, I, I'm, I haven't even. I'm still on like the first ship or something with all the pink stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not very far. I'm not very far at all. I, I was trying to hope that Angela would watch, and then she's also been have a lot. You know, had a lot of stuff going on this week, and she um, was falling asleep. So <laughs> I, it kind of lost my motivation for me to play. And I don't think it had anything to do with the game. It's just like she was comfortable and she was tired and she was covered up, and it's it's over. <laughs> Um, and then Yoshi Craft World is is fun. It's you know like kind of a whimsical game, like collections. Owen's kind of progressing through, and he gets to a point where he has to find more collectible things. So that's when he bugs me, like I don't have enough sunflowers or whatever they're called, you know, to, to open up the next world. So I have to go back to the other levels and get more stuff for him. And then of course I get kind of addicted to collecting everything. So it's like Mario or these Mario type games have this nice rhythm to them that they'll get you kind of hooked in and wanting to keep going and find every little nook and cranny. Mm -hmm. They're really good at that um so yeah that um i know i kind of just went through that really quick but i haven't with it being thanksgiving and you know friday working friday saturday um and then my kid and my my son and his fiance and my daughter being home there's just a lot going on last week so obviously yeah uh for me it's um i i picked up death store on the switch i know you picked that up on playstation because uh, that finally came yep. out uh on switch and playstation last week uh, haven't dug super deep into it. Like I'm about an hour in, 
it's interesting, but I haven't found exactly usually with these games that like catch everyone's attention. I remember when it came out, everyone was like death Door is like one of the best games out this year. Usually those games catch my attention right away. This one seems to be a little bit slower, like mechanic wise, like it's pretty simple. I mean, it's like a top down, like almost dungeon crawler like experience. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting characters like the art is is fascinating uh but in terms of like the actual gameplay mechanics i'm still too early to like make an actual opinion on like the mechanics and i haven't quite seen what everyone was so hooked on with this game uh which i was expecting it to like grab me quicker uh but i think because of the way the game just kind of throws you into it and rolls out the mechanics it's just a little bit on the slower side so i haven't quite got into like a rhythm to where I'm like, okay, now I see what everyone else has seen about this game. Mm -hmm. Still playing uh, Halo Infinite. Uh, They've updated Halo Infinite like twice now to like kind of fix the progression. Um, I believe they... Something today, right? Yeah, so the first update was they just give you 50 points for playing a game. Like they're just like, here's 50 points Mm -hmm. for playing a game. Uh, and then recently still not enough yeah and then as of today they basically are like okay so you'll get like xp based on playing your first game your second game and it like gradually decreases so like your first game you'll get like 200 xp and then your second game will be 150 your third game you know 100 and then so on till like your sixth game is only 50 so that's a like a band-aid i still feel like they need to like do some significant changes to this game because like i'm kind of tired of my character just being the character i picked you know in terms of like the cosmetics like i'm kind of locked into this character design and i see people that have spent money on the battle pass Mm -hmm. and i'm like shit their 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 guardian or whatever looks so much cooler than mine i'm kind of tired of looking at mine but spartan yeah spartan whatever (laughs) but uh, it's one of those things where it's just like i don't want to spend the money on the battle pass because even then the battle pass just gives you access to more stuff, but you're still stuck in that progression system. It doesn't change the yeah. progression system enough or at all to justify me getting it. Yeah, and then the only one that does is like forty bucks. Yeah, oh, to, no, thank you. to where it's just like I, I'm, I'm just not. Into <laughs> yeah, this. there's a there's a group like I like I talked about before. Like I played, I was playing Destiny with some Xbox guys for for a little while when when Destiny was down for some other people. Um, they're they're they very very much like Halo. Um, and they're, they're, they're playing it and it's like, you've, like you said, like the gameplay is really good and, um, they're complaining about the progression system. If you go on Reddit, uh, Reddit's complaining about the progression system, yeah. um, you know, and so on and so forth. And, and I was, I keep telling them, I'm like, okay, well, like this is, this is exactly what they want. Like they're, this is free to play. This is exactly what they want. You're playing, you're paying because almost all of them bought the battle pass because they're halo junkies. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that when I say that, but they are not going to do anything until their player base declines or battle pass sales decline. Yeah. And they don't have to do anything. Yeah. Especially <laughs> so, they're, they're yeah, going to get this, you with, you know, the game pass aspect yeah. too. So, yeah. or $60 for the campaign. Mm-hmm. They win either way. Yeah. Um, and they get this buffer. I was telling them in Discord today, and they and nobody really, you know, like some people don't like when I say stuff like this. And I know like people maybe aren't used to me like crapping on Xbox or whatever because they've been making some good decisions for a little while. And the decisions they've been making with the progression in Halo are garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, however, December 8th, the campaign comes out, okay? And you probably get a 10 to 14 day buffer on the campaign being out. People are going to be playing the campaign. They're going to they're going to be enjoying the campaign. They're going to be so happy they have a Halo campaign they haven't had for X amount of years, and they're going to be having fun and playing it. And then you get Christmas. And we just talked about the Series S being the best-selling piece of tech. And all those people are going to get Series S's for Christmas. Mm. And Halo multiplayer is going to be right there in front of them. Oh, yeah. It's on and if the they get a Game Pass subscription, forever. they're going to play the campaign. Yeah. So 343 is on holiday break while Christmas happens and their player count goes through the roof because of post-Christmas. And then they start when you get into the middle of January, that's when you start seeing a little bit of a decline or a decrease or people start getting annoyed or they're not seeing people as far along in the battle pass as they want to see. And that's when they change the progressive system and they go, Hey, look, we're listening with air quotes. Yeah. I also think they're going to drop the, the, the co-op cooperative version of the campaign earlier than may. Yeah. I think so too. At, I think, as I a, think it's a February. as again, as a 
community feedback we're listening to you kind of thing or they drop it in like, chunks or as a yeah. beta or whatever but yeah, yeah i can see that like, and then i, I they haven't yeah. mentioned like maps or anything like that but i'm sure those aren't yep. too far away like it's all gonna be in may yeah. they're gonna bring all that stuff in may they're gonna add more maps they're gonna fix whatever the private matches are they're going to you know add a couple new things or different game modes or make some major tweaks to progression but they're not doing it till may because again it's free to play and there's no risk and any change they make will just increase the player count yeah, and, later. and honestly like right now <laughs> even though i'm upset with the progression i'm still playing every night like three to five yeah. matches well and that's what i told them in the discord server and they all got kind of like annoyed with me i'm like but I, you're still paying i'm sorry you're still playing and you're still paying yeah and for me <laughs> like, i haven't put a dollar into it and i won't yep. until the progression. yeah i'm not yeah. saying i'm not saying you yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, you know whether people like to hear it or don't like to hear it the player count is what matters to 343 and ultimately was what matters to Microsoft. And even then... Like the player count. Even then, if the player count goes down, if enough of those are whales, then it doesn't matter anyways because yep. that, that's the key. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and there's not much room for, you know... like I mean, they have other cosmetics. You can buy individual cosmetics like that are yep. team sponsors and stuff like that. So, But any change they make will just... Any change or adjustment they make will just... You'll see an immediate spike in players. And if it works, they stay. If it doesn't work, they leave and they make a different change and it does it all over again. Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. Destiny is Destiny has done this for years. Every years. every free to play game does this. <laughs> like it's not yeah. it's nothing new. Uh, they're just applying it to the Halo <laughs> franchise now. Um, other games, I, since it was like Thanksgiving, uh, there was a lot of Mario Party and Overcooked being played. Uh, and then nice. Guardians Galaxy. I'm in chapter five or six. I. I I definitely see why people love this game because the writing has been fantastic. Like their work on the characters to be a mix of what you would expect in the comics and a little bit of the movie uh, mixed in is pretty, pretty well done. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like they're both, it's copying both movies and comics, but it's not doing it in a a annoying way though. You can put them all in their original, in their movie costumes, which is kind of funny to see. Uh, them mm-hmm. just get reskinned with like their movie uh, costumes, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm enjoying like kind of everything about that game. Uh, I know I was a little down on the combat last week in terms of like I was still in the same boat you are. Where last week I was too early in the game to like mm-hmm. figure out all the mechanics, but as I've been playing, they've been adding enough stuff to it. Uh, the mechanics aren't crazy deep in terms of like expansion. Like there's like different abilities you can uh, you can unlock for each of the people or each of the people on the on the group on the team yeah and there's only like four abilities for each one so it doesn't get too complicated and for the most part you kind of use the same ones once you unlock yeah. other abilities I'm, I'm at the i'm at the point where the the love hate part with the game of like where i pick something up it's like oh look this is what you picked up blah 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 blah, blah, blah. i'm like I, okay i really don't care and then it's like oh, the, then it's like oh like groot can do something to the you know you can program him to like tie a bunch of enemies up for you and it's like groot's ability like and it puts it like this big like a banner on the screen i'm like okay like cool like don't do that again yeah <laughs> like, yeah I, I, there, there's a lot of aspects of it though i, I like even the the yeah. huddle mechanic which I, you probably haven't seen just yet no i have not uh, yeah, yeah. where at a certain point you can just huddle the team together and as star lord you give a motivational speech and if they like the speech everyone gets boosted like health or damage uh yeah yeah and then there's like different outcomes based on if they don't like the speech that's a pretty cool mechanic uh, though about the fourth or fifth time you do that mechanic, you're kind of like, okay, so we got an animation to where we all huddle up and then we got to go through this dialogue option and then it like kicks off the music. Mm-hmm. It gets kind of tiresome, but like early on, yeah. it at least has a good music drop for the most part. But I'm just like, um, oh, like if I'm doing this in almost like every other set piece, like I'm going to get tired of this mechanic by the end of the game. So I'm hoping there's like a little bit of change with that mechanic towards the end or I'm just going to end up ignoring <laughs> that aspect of the game uh but uh still enjoying that i'll probably end up finishing it this week because i know it's not a terribly long game and i'm on like yeah. chapter five or I six have, i have a goal or an ambition by the end of the year to get metroid dread death door in this game done i don't know if i can do it yeah metroid dread <laughs> i gotta get back to it and i'm at the point where yeah. i probably will just have to delete my save and start fresh yeah. uh, just because uh early on in that game they introduced a lot of mechanics and i kind of need those Don't for the remember. battles <laughs> yeah. uh, so i'll probably have to redo that um that's it for playing watching 
it hasn't been too much. I've just kind of been playing these games, mostly Halo. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't watch football. Uh, I'm kind of tired of the Marvel stuff, so I haven't seen Eternals. I have, like, no interest in Hawkeye. I was really hoping we would be mm-hmm. done with, a, like, basic human who's good with a bow and arrow. Like, I thought we would be done with that. I like Kate Bishop in the comics, but I never needed to see Kate Bishop, like, in live-action form. Because now it's like, oh, we're just going to have another bow and arrow person on the Avengers team in five years. I'm not really interested in that. Um, And the Eternals is basically Power Rangers, as far as I can tell. So I'm just like, I don't really need... (laughs) I don't need, like, to see Eternals right away. Uh, So, I don't know. I'm just... Have you seen seen Shang-Chi? No, not yet. I just haven't, like... It's on Disney Plus now. No, I know. Yeah, I was super excited to okay. see it before, and then I just... Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm excited for Spider-Man. Spider-Man might get me to go into a movie theater. I can't believe this ticket scalpers that I'm seeing. Like, are people like... Everybody's like, scalpers are doing this. And I'm like, no, people are buying that. What didn't like, help is AMC giving away NFTs with tickets, which just... What is that? a non-fungible token it's just basically you you own a gif the gif is your gif the picture is your picture and it's oh, coded okay. to you so people are using this as a new grift so they were giving away nfts with spider-man so of course people bought spider-man tickets to get their nft yeah <laughs> my wife put it it's a scam you know it's basically a scam that's horrible for the environment so basically okay now people are buying Spider-Man tickets as a get-rich-quick scheme because they're hoping these NFTs will be worth something one day, and all it is is a picture, like a digital picture that you can resell. <laughs> it's stupid. We're in the end of times, uh, yeah. and it's not going to be because of some like crazy religious thing. It's going to be because I saw like headlines that said that, yeah. and I didn't care to read them. I was like, I don't even know what the heck an NFT is. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, I didn't Google it, and I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, done. yeah. And then you brought it up again. And I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, get ready, man. I don't know if you've been looking at our digital days email, but there's so many emails with people talking about NFTs that I'm just like, please stop emailing us about NFT related video games. Wait, it's all of next year is just going to be video game companies talking about NFTs sucks all right uh is that it <laughs> yeah yeah that's it just me ranting about nfts <laughs> not a problem all right so we got like three questions we're gonna go through quick uh it is gonna be a shorter show uh post thanksgiving so you're welcome <laughs> um so savage zero one one eight uh hey guys just checking in uh did you guys get anything for black friday slash cyber week uh what's the best deal you got uh i bought angela a ninja food processor from my store <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bought like boring shit like i bought like a, a google nest thing i bought a ring doorbell even though i don't have a house to put it on yet but it was so cheap that i was like i might have one next year um and then just video games so i ended up picking and it, this was all like stuff for like ddg basically i, I like and myself uh, obviously but like i wanted to make sure i covered whatever games we could and, uh, so wait, wait wait before you say i want to know did you buy nickelodeon kart racers for 15 dollars? oh you mean uh all stars the the brawler or kart racer Oh, there's a kart racer. I think it was. 15. Yeah, no, no maybe I, I bought that. Maybe I was getting maybe I was getting confused. Yeah. Um. So I bought Hot Wheels Unleashed for a Series X. Yes, my, yes, Randy. It counts. <laughs> Be quiet. Um. <laughs> I bought Resident Evil Village. I bought Life is Strange, and then I bought um, actually uh, Death Store. Those are like my four game pickups. But Death Store wasn't okay. on sale. Um. Basically, I'm just buying games to prepare for Endwalker because I'm not gonna see my fiance or my PlayStation <laughs> Five for like the next like week or two. So I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna play or all three. of Life is Strange and Hot Wheels Unleashed, uh, because Endwalker comes out Friday. I did get a new Xbox controller. I got like that that blue one, like that royal blue okay. one with with the white back. <laughs> I've been tempted to get so some weird. new controllers, but I don't use my Xbox that much to where I'm like... Well, somehow my original Xbox controller that I bought when I was PC gaming for the little bit, or that I still try to... Like, it got like it must have fallen off the shelf or something, and it, like, cracked. Yeah, <laughs> so. like, right now, like, my Xbox is just a solo person machine, because I, I, it's, yeah. it's hooked up to a monitor. So, like, I have two controllers, and I want to get the Forza controller, the 20th anniversary controller, but I just couldn't justify 
Yeah, I saw some of those, but like the blue one was like fifty bucks. Like I almost bought that like Volt, that Volt color, that yeah, that that whatever, like that neon green highlighter. That Space Jam um, one still goes on sale. Yeah, on yeah. like by. some of them look pretty cool. The Xbox controller does, you know, form factor wise looks pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, like nothing, nothing crazy, like nothing ridiculous. Um, so and then uh, Randy writes, if you could create the ideal video game for yourself, what would it be? You want to go first? Yeah, mine is going to be pretty boring. I know some people pick, like, uh, open-world action-adventure. Uh, just give me a, a games-as-a-service Tetris. Um, <laughs> Tetris 99? No, but I want it to be updated with, like, new music frequently. Uh, uh, like I want, like, a Tetris effect to where the backgrounds are changed frequently and, like, music's changed frequently. Just because Tetris 99... They had a board like every six months and it's a psych, but it's a <laughs> static image. So it's nothing too impressive. Tetris effects amazing, but I've listened to those like 30 songs hundreds of times by now. And I've seen those like 20 backgrounds, hundreds, if not thousands of times. Give me a handheld Tetris effect that actually updates frequently with new music and new visualization stuff. That would be the ideal game yeah. for me. Uh, mine's pretty easy. Uh, I want a co-op Ninja Turtles game made by Rocksteady. Specifically Rocksteady? You won't settle for... Uh... I just trust their combat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like... yeah Platinum tried and couldn't do it. So, yeah. uh, I guess that makes sense. Rocksteady, like Ninja <laughs> Turtles, probably would be fine. You, it would take them years and forever to make it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So it'd be 70-year-old Dave being like, finally, <laughs> my Ninja Turtles games. But it includes Venus, so you're just like, oh, my God, I hate. <laughs> All right, and our last question comes from Will Richardson. Uh, he says, this is, the f- this is the first generation that I have not had a console within six months, and I don't regret it. I've been largely underwhelmed regarding any next-gen exclusives. Do you think this generation came too early, or is this the effects of COVID? Uh, both? Yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think kind of both. Um Actually, I think so. On on Xbox, I was I I saw this question before Michael did, and I added to it. So between Xbox Series and PS Five, you have the Medium, Returnal, Ratchet and Clank, and Deathloop. Yeah, that that's it. Yeah, in in thirteen in thirteen months. Yeah, and uh, Demon Souls, as well. It's a fu- sure. it's a full remaster. You can, it's not just okay. a paint job. Okay. Um. Yeah, I almost feel like this generation came too late and then COVID messed up everything because like last gen went way too fucking long. Last gen was like Mm -hmm. barely making it like the last three years to where we were accepting horrible shitty frame rates and a jet Mm -hmm. engine consoles. So I almost feel like this one came too late and then COVID just messed up all of the workflow to where stuff gets delayed three or four times and we're you know at this point we can't mm. even complain godfall yeah sorry godfall yeah. uh but it just came out on ps4 so yeah but yeah yeah okay it just yeah uh so. but no i feel like last gen went too long uh to where it almost like like tired us out <laughs> to where we were like upset at this generation because this generation is better but it's not even hitting like we're still having to pick performance and Mm -hmm. fidelity modes like that's crazy like we should just be able to hit 4k 60 on shit but because last gen went so long like we have to deal with this like this feels like a half step almost well because last gen went so long and was so successful yeah but they can't just break the bank they can't just you know so when ps4 came out they're like hey you know what we messed up with ps3 you know like it still did okay did well but we messed up a couple things so poof, here's the wall and here's where we are going forward. And then there is both camps. Like people are saying that, you know, a from, from your standpoint, it was too long. And people are like playing the last of us. Like, why do I need a new system? Yeah. And those people are you know, crazy. Last, last of us part <laughs> yeah, two, yeah, yeah. you know, but there, and there's a lot of people in that. And they're still like, like, will they're still saying it now. Like, why do I need a new system? And they're not wrong. Yeah. You know, I'm but, just upset. These generations wasn't even a big jump. Uh, in terms of like we basically got the stuff we were promised last gen but it's like actually here yeah you know the 60 the fact that you know in february of 2021 
potentially we're going to be playing the sequel to Horizon that can be played on PS4s. Crazy. Yeah. Like, and then four or five months later, God of War, that you're almost 18 months out from console launch and you're still releasing something on your well, prior gen system as well. I think when Horizon comes out specifically, that's when people are going to be like, shit, I need to get a PS5. Because, like, that, that's going to end up chugging on the, mm-hmm. <laughs> on the PS4. You put the disc in your place. It's just like, I quit. Like last of us, like <laughs> it was a technical Marvel. If you look at how it ran yeah. on the PS4, uh, same thing with ghost. Um, it was really yeah. the last of us part two. You remember how long those load screens were just to start the game? Oh, God. <laughs> like my God, like I was messing up in guardians on a quick time event a couple times. And I am so glad I'm playing it on a PS5. Cause I can't imagine mm-hmm. messing up the quick time event three times in a row. Uh, yeah, the series S load times seem fine too. Yeah. The little bit, the, the couple times that I've like, hey, can I make that jump? Nope. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I can't imagine playing that on like PS4, or Xbox One, and being like, yeah, this is fine. Like I, I we've become spoiled because of the SSD. Oh yeah, for sure. I almost like bought an SSD expansion for the PS5. I saw one for like 130 or 140 mm-hmm. bucks, and I was like, uh, uh, no. There's still not <laughs> like, enough games to justify it. Or at least yeah, me. so. All right, so those are your questions. You can send us those using hashtag AskDigitalDays. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter. The main account is at DigitalDaysPod. Michael's account is at the first MJC. My account is at GoodDaveHunt. Uh, Facebook group, Discord server are all linked in the show notes. Uh, Patreon.com slash DigitalDaysGaming if you want to support us that way. A couple of you have upped your tiers from 5 to 7 or from 3 to 5, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but $1 tip jar, $3 Discord access to a private uh, ser- or channel within our server, not access to the Discord, just in the server. You can join the Discord by clicking on the link in the show notes. Um, $5 gets you 24-hour early access to most numbered episodes. I say most because we released the Thanksgiving one day and date on both because we wanted to get it out on Wednesday. So that happens twice a year, if that. Yeah. Uh, some of that depends on what, you know, Thursday's our day. Thanksgiving's always going to fall on Thursday, so it's probably going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know, because I don't believe in releasing an episode on a holiday. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then $7 gets you monthly uh, bonus uh, bonus episodes, uh, similar to one that we are going to be recording today. Uh, so for uh, November. Mm-hmm. So again, if you have any ideas or if you want to support us through Patreon, you can do so that way. Um, if you have ideas for shows that you would like us to topics you can like us to cover, you can send us send us those to emails or podcasts or uh, to you know Twitter, Facebook, anywhere, Discord, tons and tons of different ways to reach Michael and myself. So um, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. If you celebrate it, if not, I hope everyone had a great weekend um and i hope everyone has just a you know a great december because we're it'll be december by the time you're listening to this which is crazy and we got snow the other day not cool <laughs> so, but uh other than that keep moving forward don't be a dick also get vaccinated but don't be a dick <laughs>